hey, are you missing new episodes of Generation Z and Gafgar and of Outlaws and Lawmen? Perhaps corporate punishment? Well, send some incentive to our writers. How about go to your Venmo and send a contribution to at Fishbonius at Fish, B-O-N-I-U-S. Welcome to Chronosphere Fiction. This is your pilot, Daniel French. And it's time to catch up with Halsey Malicewell, the fifth level ranger. Willow Lagond, the fifth level monk. Bruner Stormshield, the fifth level paladin. And Egan, the fifth level bard. In that mysterious city that we know as Port Lock. Ready your spellbooks and buckle on your blades. Here we go. When we left off, you guys had defeated Abel Reed, wearer of the Circlet of the Vine. You have retrieved the Circlet of the Vine. Willow, Brunar, and Halsey have made their way back to the village and taken the bodies of various innocents where they belonged, are preparing to leave in the morning, but Egan stayed behind and wanted to check things out. And we began as the dice pour on the table. Shoot. Make some noises, boys. Yes, indeed. Go for it. Look at that. Oh, oh, he's got to unbuckle his thing. Whoa, put that back, dude. I said dice. <laughs> I will be free. God darn purple worm. <laughs> Man, it's only as big as the one in the book. Oh. <laughs> like he got gotcha. you. Right, he got gotcha. you. Uh, yeah, okay, all right. So, Egan, um, what'd you eat for dinner? Nothing. Souls of I'm the innocent. <laughs> Egan would, was probably looking around. Oh, you had stuff in your pack. I did. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let me yeah. check. I had some uh, jerky. <laughs> jerky. Right. Some jerky. Remember, yes, you got some mead from the. Uh, oh, I do. From the little shop. Yes, yeah. I do. Mm hmm. I have some of that too. Yeah. Yes. So, did you need to make a fire and cook anything, or do you want a fire? I'll try to make a fire. Um, it's not a cold, cold night at all. You guys would feel. Remember, it's kind of early summer. Mm-hmm. Just, um, a, just in case, I'll still make a fire because I remember deep in the back of my mind that my ranger friend said, "Always make a fire when you're by yourself, so animals don't try to jump you when you're sleeping." Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I'll just try to make a little fire. Animals, among other things. Okay, Egan, you're putting your little stack of wood there together, and you're. By the way, I'll, I'll go back a little bit up to this point. You've you've done a lot of searching around, and you've found lots of vines, lots of dried up plants. Um, you found a little quicksand on your side oh, it, over there. That's that. Um, I, I'm assuming we're still on the other side from the village of the river. That's where we left off. Okay. And you found two pods. What? Found two pods? You found two pods. What? Open them up. And you know what's in there. Yep. <laughs> Desiccated people. You don't see anything that would say who they are. Clothing, shoes. No. Nothing. nothing. Oh, yo, yo. These ones, it, it looks like they've been there all a while wow. longer than the other ones. And whatever was in there has been decomposed eaten or whatever, right? But, Even if it was a shoe, you know, it's, it's gone. But I'll take these back with me. It'll be uh, at least some comfort that these... You can oh, try right. cooking them. Really so sorry for jumping back and forth in time there. So you're building your fire. Yes. And you hear this... And you feel this, like, really gnarly mosquito bite. Oh, no. <laughs> in the back of your neck. I... And you go, and sure enough, there's this dart-like needle thing with a cup at the end of it, about the size of your pinky uh, fingertip, stuck in your neck that you just pulled out and looked at. That's weird. And while you're looking at it, it gets very blurry. And make a constitution save. (laughs) (laughs) This is why you don't split the party. (laughs) Mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. (laughs) 
We need, we need yeah. some of that uh, immunity to poison stuff. Come on, all that beer and wine. <laughs> hey. Could have done it. You don't take any damage. Okay. You feel a little bit nauseous, and everything goes black. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> so everything's going back. again. Uh, I'm, I'm alive. I'm okay. Cool. I'm asleep. I just I'm just surrounded by a bunch of grongs. He's, like, he's gonna wake up in the morning in a cauldron with carrots floating. Around. <laughs> oh man, you should have gone with the tournament. <laughs> oh, this is a really nice bat. Yeah. Let me hand you a player's handbook so you can roll a new character. <laughs> okay, oh. now shall I go to Egan in the morning or shall I go to you guys in the morning? You go with them. I think that'll be more fun. Okay, Brunar and what are your names? Halsey and Willow. <laughs> Willow, you're in a hut by yourself when you wake up. If you'll remember, you went to your hut before anybody else did because you were really sad and you weren't feeling very well and you were with Freyla in the war room or, you know, in that yeah. meeting hall and they were about to bring in the body of the kid they were going to autopsy mm. and, and you said, I'm going to go be by myself. You wake up to the sound of some, like, rocks being buckled against each other and rolled around a little bit outside of your head. Not really loud. It's like somebody's building a little fire pit outside. Which is what's happening. <laughs> Slowly get out of bed. Hey, you're not hungover. You didn't actually drink a lot last night. You thought... You were <laughs> Do you know my character? You, compared, to, <laughs> compared to the normal Willow. All right. You, you, you took it kind of easy last night because of the way you were feeling. And, and when you went to rest and lay back and think about life and whatnot... I drank more. You, you, uh, <laughs> more. <laughs> no, you, you, you kind of drifted off. All right, so I'm not. And this is probably the earliest in the morning you've woken up in a long time. And you Why can tell the, the sun sunrise. So low in the sky? Yeah, the sunrise is filtering into your little shack there through various little cracks and stuff. You know, these little huts aren't the best made things in the world. And, and you can tell the sun is still low. It hasn't risen very high yet. Well, it was just. Listening to people outside talking about where they're going. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to the Where the hell is the Langa? That's on the other side of the Murky Mountains, man. All kinds of shit to go to the Langa. I'm gonna. I guess I'll put. I'll put my clothes on. Head out into the early morning, which I'm not used to. Oh, God, it's really cold out. It's oh, yeah, you know, it's it's, it's midsummer. It's it's colder than it don't, than you're used to. Yeah, you're Jeez. usually sleeping through this part of the morning. <laughs> And uh, yeah, there's a woman wearing a gray, you know, dress tunic -y looking thing with a yellow cloak and hood. And she's building like a little fire pit right around the huts where you guys are staying. And it's almost done. And, and she's putting some kindling in it. And she has some kind of iron barbecue grill kind of thing ready right there. Morning. Good morning, Willow. How are you? How do you know my name? <laughs> Well, come on. How many visitors do we get? How many of them are only half human? Is that a personal uh, attack or something? <laughs> no, it's just that you're an oddity. You're not, you're not something normal. Uh, you're the only monk I've ever met or seen, I should say, where you're actually just meeting. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. What's yes, name? my name is Trisha. Nice to meet you, Trisha. Mm -hmm. Thank you again. I mean, you're going to be dead anytime soon, so it's fun. No. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. so what you What you doing? Making a well, of course, the, the, the villagers around will um, have some breakfast ready for you guys. But since last night we learned that the, uh, the vine plant creature is gone, I took it upon myself to do some river climbing. Nice. And look what I got. And she drops this big bag. And it's full of clams. Very smart. And uh, so I decided I'd make my little pit right here so that you guys would wake up to the smell of fresh roasting clams. Right, I'll go back to bed then. That's what it says on my underwear. <laughs> okay. I go back into my sleep and then I go back into my bed and wait until the clams are roasting. Then I'll wake okay. up again. <laughs> I'll say about another 15 minutes or so go by and all three of you awake to this wonderful, smoky seafood aroma. Nummy. Oh, were we, were me and Bruner sleeping? I thought we went to go look for Egan. Did you guys? You already went? Yes. Well, no, no, no. When we just, did you decide you were going in the dark? I thought we did. We were we talking just... about it. Okay. We have done we the morning. Were... I will switch places if that's we what were... you guys want to do. We're worried about it. I just well, yeah, listened we're... to the end of it. 
and I asked if you were going to go look for Egan in the dark, and it had not been decided. Ah, okay. Well, these so guys go, go with back in time. <laughs> I would love to look for him in the dark. I don't know about and it. We'll I can't do speak the morning for him. After. I'm I'll, all for it. Oh, I, yeah, I'm doing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, we're both up for it. <laughs> Willow wakes up to the clams being cooked, you know. But, okay, we go back Slow. in time in case. Clams Are you guys four. going... As the sun goes down, are you heading back to where Egan is? Yeah, we're going to head back to where we... Okay, the sun sets. Horses or no? Yes. And a torch. And a torch. Okay. So you are riding along the road, if you want to call it that. It might be dark enough to get a little bit lost, but between the two of you and your skills and the fact that you just traveled this path twice once in each direction you are making your way just fine oh i remember this part of this and you know remember on our way back how we noted how this clump of trees over here had all rotted all of a sudden on our way back and you're about halfway there and you hear what sounds like maybe a few deer okay running through the woods maybe about 50 yards inland from the river past you by the the Doppler, you know, the speed of how fast the sound goes by you. Can't be deer. Not fast enough. Unless they're just walking. Could be. Hmm. Deers grazing at night doesn't sound right. You're the ranger. I think we should investigate that sound just in case. All right, Bruner, when we go in there, just keep a lookout for yellow eyes just so we're ready. All right? All right. Okay. Yellow eyes are wolves. Ah. <laughs> See, you know, you know when you know something and you just assume everyone else knows it. Yes. Yeah, and <laughs> wolves are one of those things for me. Sorry, uh, no worries. Oh. It's just like a big deal in the woods. So I mean, I feel like everyone should know. Okay, so do you both walk together? Yeah, of course. You go in two different directions. Okay. We're not going to be stupid enough as splitting from the party. Right. <laughs> now you're, you're you're going in the direction of the noise. I take it. Yes. yes. Okay. You hear, as you go in that direction, definitely what sounded like a voice. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. a, like a whiny, angry little voice. That kind of thing. Okay, now I'm definitely sure not a deer. Good. And <laughs> as you say that, you hear more like skittering, running, going away from you. Oh, Lord. And you also hear this... Like a, a mud noise, like if, if you had thrown a drunk in the mud and he was picking himself up. Really noisy mm. woods. Uh, and you're getting closer to it, and you catch a glint of movement in the moonlight, glistening off of something wet, but something in that wetness is moving, and it's about 30 feet away from you. Yeah, we, we go investigate that. Yeah. As you head sword. closer, you hear almost a little giggle. <laughs> And the the sloshy noise continues, and the smell of meat feces, you know, feces of of a meat eater that ate a lot of meat. And as you come closer, you see this glistening, wet, little, could be human, humanoid, rolling around and sliding around in this pile of poo. Poo. And the poo is, is, I mean, before he jumped in the middle of it, it, it must have been at least knee high and bigger around than the tire on a semi truck, you know? And he's rolling around in it, giggling it and, and rubbing it on his arms and legs and in his armpits. Yes, you're warm. I look to Bruner, kind of like with a quizzical look. I'm out. <laughs> I'm done. My guy has nothing on this. I'm out. Hey, hey buddy, that's a good way to get worms. Rolling poop. And you say, hey, buddy, and you see like this head pop up and turn towards you. And it looks like a pretty small humanoid, like smaller than, uh, it was the Hobbit. Yeah, the halfling, halfling. that we met. Ted, that's Ted. it. It was Ted. And he is obviously in shock and jumps out of the dung pile and begins to run the direction that the other runner had gone. Should we follow the poo baby? I really, really don't want to, but we should. I mean, we haven't found Egon yet. Well, you're not anywhere near where Egon would be yet. You still have yeah. about another hour of traveling before you get there. Yeah. Hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it's your call, bud. This is just weird. This is very weird. <laughs> I'm just, is, I'm just saying, just... maybe a little more info. 
might lighten our way. All right. Okay, look, we follow the poo baby. Okay, you follow the poo baby. And uh, it's getting pretty dark. You know, it's been a while. Right, we have a torch out, right? Uh -huh. The trail is semi-easy to follow. Not of the first humanoid, but the second one, you know, there's there's little drippings mm -hmm. here and there and wet footprints. and it Makes it easier to track. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, pretty easy to track, even at night using your torch. You guys, yeah. you know what you're doing. You're, you're Halsey, man. Even if Bruner's not totally into it, Halsey can do it. <laughs> You can tell that even though you're on horses, unless you try to ride fast, in which case you would have a good chance of losing the trail, that he's moving faster than you. He's moving ahead of you. Mm -hmm. And you travel in this way, unless you want to change what you're doing, for nearly an hour. Like you would have been in the spot that you were originally headed towards to find Egan. Yeah. And you know you're, you're not that far from that area. You're just a little bit more inland. How much exactly... You may have lost track of a little bit. Sure. You don't hear the river anymore. But as you round this copse of trees, you see this shadowy lump in the path ahead of you. We hold up. Hold up. Okay. It's about 50 feet in front of you. It looks like somebody's laying there on the ground, kind of curled up a little fetalish. Throw the torch. I throw the torch near it. We can get a little it's view. definitely a human. Okay. It's All a right. person laying there sound asleep from the look of what you can see in the fire, apparently stark naked. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> All right. You go wake them up. Um, I have your back. All right. Did I get robbed? I go wake them. As you walk up and you go to wake this person, you recognize the face. <laughs> <laughs> and it is your good friend Egan oh, no. laying in this path entirely naked. He has none of his stuff. He is just naked. This again? <laughs> again. <laughs> First time was intentional. <laughs> so we wake him. Poor guy. At this point in time, pretty easily done. So Egan, you, you're being oh, jostled God. around a bit and, oh, and you're having your little cute dream and you're like oh baby whatever and as you open your eyes and you're expecting to see one thing you see Bruner's ugly mug oh. <laughs> your 18 eyes. charisma okay Bruner's beautiful sexy <laughs> face uh -huh. giving you the the arched eyebrow hey again what's up <laughs> uh, hey you uh did you stash your stuff somewhere uh, what do you mean because you're here naked. Man, where do you even find parties this far out in the woods? I don't understand. Wait, wait what? I look down. <laughs> oh, son of a... You got dong hanging out, man. <laughs> Cover okay. up. Hey, don't act like you've not seen something like this before. <laughs> <laughs> but, look. <laughs> he's like... He's just more shocked than anything. Scrubs a leaf. Like, Does any of y'all have a blanket? Uh, do I? No. Because this no. little bot is freezing his... Good old butt off right there now. might be a chance one of you even has an extra pair of breeches or something. Please. <laughs> might be a little bit big for Egan. I don't know what's an... Exp Is there a blanket in the Explorer's pack? Um, There's like a sleeping bag. I have an iron pot. Nice. And cover one side. I'll take the sleeping bag. I'll take the sleeping <laughs> All bag. All right. Just cut <laughs> holes in the bottom and then you could... <laughs> I got rope. Wear it, I guess. You can tie it like a knot. Oh, wow. Just like, yeah. It's going to be like a fashion statement. Yeah. I got rope. Rope in a sleeping bag. And a sleeping you bag. can make a little thing be out of that. Between, between oh the two God. of these, you're good to go. If I don't get, see anything coming from this from anyone, I want to see something. Uh, so Yen gets the sleeping bag and the rope. is like, give me a minute. <laughs> and yes, Egan, they took your money, your instruments. Uh, everything? Everything. Yeah, this looks like it has value. <laughs> They even took my boom powder. Everything you had, so everything you are gone. naked. Oh, sure. Don't erase everything yet, okay, because okay. you might find it. So, so he can cut holes uh, on the side of the sleeve bag for his <laughs> legs and then for his arms. And he uses the rope as a belt to tie it up. And he puts up the little sleeping bag hood. So he's just like this. This <laughs> is like... Nice. <laughs> what, kind of, uh, what kind of weapons are you proficient in? Arabias, daggers. Can you use a short sword? Well, I've been told that I'm really proficient with my short sword, but... I don't think I'd be able to use that in battles, but I can do rapiers. I only got a short sword. That was kind of a self roast right there. No, I didn't say this side. <laughs> I mean, you're short not sword. God. <laughs> oh, ghost. I, I guess you're not it proficient in it, but like you need a weapon. So yeah, I hand you my offhand short sword. <laughs> I'm just holding a hand with a sword. No, no, this is my offhand short sword. 
So exactly. it's like it's a, a hand that's off you. Oh. It's a short sword. <laughs> I have okay. an extra dagger. I'll take the dagger and I hand back the sword. So, yeah. okay. so I think we should go try to find his stuff. His stuff. Guess we shouldn't get Willow. She's too far off. I guess I look for tracks. Yeah. We assume there must be tracks leading to where he got dumped. Make some kind of tracking roll for me. Uh, All right. Z? Survival. Is that a three? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> You're so good at this. It reminds uh, me of when you were at the uh, talking tree. Yeah, okay, so that's a seven? Yeah, it's a seven. You find more than one set of tracks. Ah. And they are not all going the same direction. Okay, so we got some, some human tracks here. We got some deer tracks here. We got horse tracks all over the place. Uh, yeah. But no, the tracks I'm talking about are definitely of the humanoid you were following, but there's more than one of them. Oh, okay, and we got a, lo- a lot of baby tracks. A lot of baby and there's tracks. And there's, there's, there's children out here? There's two yes. sets of tracks we got robbed by children. that you can definitely tell are headed towards the river. Okay. There's three sets of tracks that are headed the opposite direction. There's one set of tracks headed back the direction you came. Okay, so and, and does that one have a little bit of poop on it? No, the poop track is one of the ones that goes away from the river. Okay. So that's definitely not the one that stole your stuff. That one was covered in poop. Wait, what? Uh, You'd rather not know. Poop baby. Um, <laughs> poop baby. I don't know which of these tracks would lead to your clothes. Can I roll a survival check if I can? Yeah. Hey. Hey, yeah. That's a 17. So somehow this 17 is supposed to tell you which set of tracks. It's is supposed to tell me like, you know. Most recent. I, I suggest oh, no. since, since the ones we care about are the ones that probably are going to be a little deeper because they had to be carrying you or have your body being dragged. Also, the ones... Or just all the stuff he has. The ones, yeah. um, they would also be deeper because they would I'm be sorry. carrying all his armor and right. stuff. Right, right. Yes. Those are the ones we're looking for. On further look, the set of tracks going towards the river are coming from the river. Mm, they headed right back. And they are the same tracks that are going away from the river. So how has he read it a little wrong? Uh-huh. I think they all go to the same direction. It's really dark, man. Basically, at this point, to Egan, after it's been pointed out to him by Halsey, and he looked at it, Egan goes, no, 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 this is all one group going one direction. They started over there, and they're going that way. Yeah. All right, let's follow them. All right. <laughs> We're going to follow them. Okay, and they are not going towards the river. They're going inland. They're going inland. Do you guys want to share one horse? Or do you want to run? You know, make me or, walk after this. <laughs> or we all walk. Look, I don't mind sharing a horse. I could share a horse. That's fine. You're wearing your sleeping bag. I don't mind it. Awkward science. Yeah. Speaks <laughs> That's fine. Wait, what happened to... Oh, they stole it. They probably stole your horse. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They stole my horse. Yeah. That they, makes sense. Why they wouldn't they? They, they, took, they took everything. They stole sugar cube. You named it? It's, they, they don't belong to us. We're not going to keep them. You know that, right? We're going to go get Sugar Cube back, buddy. Don't you worry. <laughs> I hope so. Come on up here with me. He's Come on. Of- let's go. You're slowly following these tracks, making sure not to lose them. And doing so on horseback isn't always the easiest thing to do. Once in a while, you have to stop and Halsey checks us out and says, yeah, 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 we're still going the right way. You do notice as you travel, and now it's been like another half an hour or so, that um, you've left the area where... The vine creature seemed to be controlling anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. It, it looks more like a normal wood. Right. In the 45 minutes you've been traveling, you have passed beyond uh, regular, say, like walnut and elm trees. A couple of those, like, really big, thick oaks that go really high. These ones, I'm going to say, maybe uh, more than a 12 foot circumference trunk. So you're you're coming into an area where there's some of those big old oaks again. Nice. And they seem to grow as you can look down and, and notice that there's more of them and there's the stature of them even in the shadows of the night. They seem to grow into two rows. One to your right, one to your left, and you seem to be traveling right down the middle of this half amongst the trees. And you also notice that you've been traveling a bit more on an uphill, on a grade. Mm -hmm. An incline, if you will. An incline, yes. Do you continue onward? Do we continue on? The trail trail obviously follows this path between the trees. Yeah. And I wish we could get word out to Willow somehow. 
I have message. Oh, would that work? No, that's massage. <laughs> oh, no, wait. No, yeah. What does that do? It's a range of 120 feet, and you have to see the target, yeah. so no. 120 feet? Yeah. I don't think that's going to work. It's yeah, yeah, it's a cantrip. How's he thinking about what can I freaking do right now? And looking around in the trees, and he, he catches a little movement, and there's this big old horned owl looking down at you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hey, you should talk to the bird. I can talk to the bird. I can't speak with animals. Do you still have... Oh, yeah, you haven't casted anything since the last time you got... Wait, no. wait, wait. Okay, we're still... Wait, hold on. You haven't rested since the fight. Right. Yeah, no. huh. I did get an extra spell slot. That's true. Oh, yeah. So any spell slots you used all through the fight with the plat monster are still gone at this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It looks like I only used one spell slot. Okay. Uh, you want to talk to the owl? Yeah, I'm going to use speak with animal. What's up, Palsy Ranger? Uh, you, you know me. Yeah, I've, I've seen you before. We've met. Yeah. Oh, the, oh, you're oh, you're that corn owl or Cornelius? Yeah. Oh, dude, nice. To, how, how are the kids? Oh, fantastic. Great, great, great. Are, are, are they flying on their own now? Oh yeah. Wow. They've got their own nests and everything. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. I, I moved over here because I wanted to give them more space back there where we used to hang. Nice, yeah, yeah. nice. Wow, nature's lovely. You need to protect oh, yourself God, for a while. I talk to you about. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know the village that's out that way? Of course. We got a friend there. Hard to miss. She's gonna be gonna be really easy to spot between all the villagers. Um, a monk sort of person wears. You wear dark colors, right? Dark purple and orange. Yeah, she wears dark purple and orange mm. colors. Uh, she's a half elf. I should have led with that. <laughs> she's the only half elf of monks. All the humans. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm gonna... Does, uh, I speak human for a bit. Do you guys have any parchment and pens? Let me check. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got it. Okay, we give... Okay, I, I talked to that one again. Cornelius, we're gonna give you something of ours, and you're gonna show Willow and have her follow you. Does that make sense? Back to this spot. Back to this... Yeah, back to this spot. Okay. Yeah, okay. He's a very intelligent owl. Yeah, I, of course. I know, he's Cornelius. I know, I know he's Cornelius. <laughs> um, okay, so hey, what do we own that Willow really knows is ours? Let me check. Let <laughs> <laughs> me look at my drawing. Send one of your prosthetic oh, hands. Yeah, prosthetic <laughs> hand. Yeah, Obviously. okay. I give him my lightest prosthetic yes. hand. It's, it's the rubber hand. <laughs> so we use it for handshakes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's not your sword hand. It's not my sword hand. No, that would be too heavy. It's uh, just one of my normal hands. How many hands do you carry? Can I, we, um, can we, I probably only have one hand. It's, can, uh, can we, can we write a note you have in the palm of your hand? Can we write a yeah. note in the palm of your hand? Oh, um, do we have pen? Let me check. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wait! I did. I did bring an O can with me. We could carve. We can nice. carve a message into nice. the O can. Nice. Follow me. Need or fo help. yeah, yeah. Follow. All Very right. good. Okay, let's move this along. <laughs> <laughs> follow this bird. So there's a message in the hand. You Willow, give it to Cornelius. Follow. Take this to Willow. If Willow seems at all like he's ready to follow you, bring her here. Yes. Very good. We set up camp. And you set up camp. So you're Why gonna not? stay right here. You're not gonna keep going. We should. We wait might for as Willow. well set up camp. We might as well go after them while we're all. Good to fight. Yeah, right? Yeah. You okay with that? Not uh, having your pants. Get our spells back and whatnot. For another night. Okay. He doesn't he's look not, very he's happy not about answering it. Me. He's not very happy about he it. He's like, I'm happy you fell for like the same joke three times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you guys go ahead and, and set up camp and uh, fire. Is there a fire? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm going to get there and they're all going to be on <laughs> They're all <laughs> naked. I'm like, oh man, I just lost this. I just got this sleeping bag. <laughs> so one of us got to stay up and keep watch. We yeah. can take shifts if that is. I got to regain some spell slots, well, so I need a solid Just eight. so that you all know, before I went night night, there was a, a little brick, probably. I think he's a brick, but I don't know. But a little thing hit me on the neck. It was a dot. Like, it was like a dot or a little stinger. With and the poisons. I think it had that, and it knocked me out. All right, so keep your eye out for darts, whoever's going to stay up. Well, I think he got the most sleep recently. He did take a nice couple hours of nap there, at least three hours, yeah. I'm already in the sleeping bag, so if anything happens, I can just go right in there, so... Right, yeah, just right. don't... Like don't lose that sleeping this, bag. Does this sleeping bag count as hide armor? Just don't move, and you look like a long rock. 
Or you'll look like a big pile of dung that they like to roll around in. Oh, full <laughs> circle. Oh, and if you see any yellow eyes, let me know. Uh, wake me up. Yellow, yellow eyes. eyes. <laughs> okay, you guys yellow set up camp. And I'll tell you right now, the, the night, rest of the night goes uneventful. All right, good. So let's replay a little bit here of Willow. Mm. You're waking up. You hear the rocks. Uh, now you go out and you meet Trisha. Yeah. And you're about to go back in to lay down while she gets this clam bake ready for you. And you hear these wings flapping coming right at you. And this big horned owl lands next to your hut and has dropped some chunk of wood on the ground in front of you. I will pick up the chunk of wood. And it is obviously one of Halsey's hands. Oh, with a message carved in it. Well, he's supposed to look for it. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or she. Whatever. Sorry, Willow. What's it say, guys? I don't remember. It says Willow. Follow owl. Follow owl. <laughs> Willow, follow owl. What did those idiots do? <laughs> I suppose I'll go get my horse. Okay. Grab some clams for the go and just <laughs> go Nice. Out. Yeah, while you're grabbing your horse, she's already Could picking clams the clams. clams travel well? I'm eating them very <laughs> <Okay>. fast. <laughs> the morning has come. Um, you guys are trying to rest in a bit because you're trying to get a full rest. Mm -hmm. Right? So I'm going to make a little bit more than sunrise go by. And it is still an uneventful morning for you, and you've been able to take turns keeping watch and making sure that you all get a full rest. And Willow, you are able to uh, follow the pathway and the owl, which periodically keeps you from continuing too close to the river and going the direction that Bruner Halsey went. All right. Sure enough, you know, the sun's up a bit more. It's getting to be around nine in the morning. And you guys are done resting and up rides Willow. And this owl lands next to Halsey and gives him back his hand. What? Thanks. And Willow <laughs> sees just <Yeah>. Egan. <laughs> what? Egan in his uh, fine new outfit. You like it? It's uh, Halsey's bag, number five. What's, what's happened? It's a sleeping bag where you pitch your tent inside the bag. Apparently, there are poop babies that... <laughs> are stealing I think that's from my people. life. What? <laughs> Apparently, there's poop babies. What is what is happening? I'm so. I got uh, a lot. You missed a lot. So confused. All, and uh, they found me, but naked while chasing some very strange looking. What appeared to be. So what did you need me for? Yeah, we're gonna go try. Oh, to get we should have told back. them to bring you extra clothes. Oh, why didn't we carve that into? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how. Safe. Bring a tux. Do you have extra clothes? Would my set of common clothes be the monk robe that I'm wearing? I'll give you an extra set because we've talked about you having different kinds of wraps and stuff. That's before. true. So you, you can basically kind of monk Egan up, kind of wrap him up, little. All right, shirt. Egan, I need you to just strip down. All Take right, that bag right. off your sack. This is the first time I ever do it. <laughs> In front of so many people. But okay. oh, lost all modesty. It's fine. I throw I'm the clothes at him. I don't think that really covers what needs to be covered. <laughs> oh, can you cast spells without your instrument? No, I can't. Oh, oh. I am useless. <laughs> all right. So, priority say, one is we got to rescue the um, instrument. No. No. Sugar cube. Sugar cube. Yeah. Operation Sweet Tooth. <laughs> this is Operation Sweet Tooth. We're getting. But they number two, the second major priority. Is the instrument. Okay, got it. I'm going to say oh, that uh, <laughs> the light bulb goes on over Halsey's head as he realizes that with all these tracks you've been following, no horse tracks. Okay, I got some bad news. <laughs> <laughs> now that there's more light, I noticed that these are just tiny tracks. I don't see any hoof tracks besides uh, the ones that the two horses of ours. Sugar cube out there. They so left. the horse just disappeared? That or they... Or they didn't even nab the horse and they left it where it was. That's true. Yeah, the horse could be <laughs> sitting right back where he was. It's like <laughs> next to the river. Wait, did you check if you still had the horse or did you just tell us? <laughs> I don't know. You found me on the side of the road, butt naked with no clothes on. Tell me what you think. <laughs> I mean, I asked you about your horse. Palms. You said it was gone, but whatever. All right. How's he's the bad guy? All right, <laughs> let's keep going. We're no longer looking for the horse. Now it's all about. The stuff. Oh, you think you can make my iron pot into an instrument? It's a drum. I guess so. I guess. Uh, Let me. I get the iron pot. I cast message. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can tell that you can try this, and that depending on the spell that you're casting, 
and how well you can create some kind of proficiency with this pot, rolls will be made. <laughs> and things might not come out the way you intended. I have a flask. Could you use it as a Ooh, flute? Like that? Like a flute? Let me try. I hand him the flask. Willow takes a big swig from hers. I cast, I'm, just, I, I'm just looking at Willow. I cast participation. <laughs> okay, Not you can understand. tell. Nothing. Wait, you're using a spell? It's a cast trip. Oh, okay, okay. You can tell if, if you work at it and you play the pot and the flask at the same time. You got some. <laughs> it's like some string and ties yeah. it like right there. Wait, 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 wait. I get an idea. Does anyone have spoons? I need some spoons. I got my eating prosthetic. I need it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. I get the rope. I tie it to the pot and I put it over my head. And then so I... Uh, <laughs> There's definitely I get, spoons in there. Yeah. Okay, I get the spoons from that, and I toss the hand back, and I get the spoons. I oh, tie it up, fork and I put, the, I put the bottle in my mouth, and I'm like... Oh my God. <laughs> Make it a little Trevor Boy kit. Right, so <laughs> we're wasting time. Let's go. Yeah, <laughs> this is not a waste of time this for a spellcaster to be able to cast spells. Yeah, it's always important. Okay, now this I got to okay, cast good. spells. I'm, I'm good. good. You just punch your way out of your problems. That everything is punching, Willow. <laughs> Yes. All right. We got we got to find this stuff and punch whoever took it. Exactly. Okay. Between the four of you, you you do have three horses right now, so you're good. Okay. So Egan walks. Okay. You continue down the uh, same path. Yes. Very well. We keep following the trail. I mean, I gotta say this about the poop babies. They did not look monstrous. I don't know if they would eat an entire horse. What did they look like? Did they have a? It was covered. It was like smaller than a halfling. It was. It was very dark. It was covered in poop. Mm -hmm. I can't give you a solid description of it. Yeah. Can I roll a nature check to see if I can, like, you know, think up maybe, like, I've heard stories of something or a history check? Just make guesses. Did you guys find a note? I'm assuming that could be it, but I can't. I don't think I've ever seen one before, so I can't. Well, they're legends, but. but they were smaller it. than a halfling and seemed to enjoy it. And the same is true poop. for you, Egan. You, you've never encountered. Yeah, they're like, 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 Willow is the. Most magical Only creature you've ever seen. race yeah. you've ever encountered besides a human or a halfling. Hey, Willow, you, mm -hmm. you wouldn't happen to know if there's a thing of legend called a gnome. I mean, things. you all know stories called gnomes, and you know that things like orcs and whatnot supposedly exist. You know all these stories and dragons. And wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if an extra small person exists. We did fight a plant monster. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's what true. if it's a small halfling, a baby halfling, a tribe of babies? That like to roll around in poop. Yeah, it's a baby. <laughs> Babies do that sometimes. Well, let's find out for science, I guess. Okay, you guys travel on unimpeded. The road winds. The forest tends to thin a little bit when it comes to things like elms and cypress and walnut trees. And, and there's a few more oaks and they are getting thicker. And then you see like a whole big copse of elm trees like almost pushed up together against each other at where this hill that you're going up seems to split into two other hills, one to your right and one to your left. And on either side of this path is an oak tree in the middle of those elms, two oak trees nearly as big as the Talking Tree Tavern. Huge, <laughs> gigantic. And the hill goes up to a, a crest where you can't quite see the bottom of the trunks of these two oak trees. And you can tell that the hill crest there too because you're looking up into the sky and the trees have thinned out. And you can tell if you went to the top of this hill, you would now be going downhill. So do you crest the hill? Should we be sneaky? Maybe. Hmm. Should we leave our horses and sneak in? Yes. Tie my horse to the tree. Biscuits. Uncle Nickel. I don't know the num. I don't know. I'm trying to think of a name for these horses. Hold Why on. Why does he always <laughs> want to eat his horses? <laughs> <laughs> Are you I'm just naming them after food? <laughs> yeah. This one is just a horse. Hot Everything dog. deserves a name. <laughs> if you name them, you grow attached to them. Hot dog. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Breakfast, lunch, dinner. <laughs> Muffin. I cast. Oh, that'll be yours. Muffin. I can't speak to animals. 
Do you guys have your own names? <laughs> You're going to cast another spell. <laughs> yeah, but we got the long rest, so now I got all my spells left. All right. Okay, just... Okay, but then you know, you got all day ahead of here, and you're using yeah, the spells Yeah, well, rangers don't use their spells often, okay. and it's usually just a dog tail. All three horses say, man, we got all kinds of stupid names. <laughs> Wait, do you guys you know have how ones you... people give us different names? Dude, oh, I know, I know. God. I'm trying to tell him... He's not going to stop until he okay, has a name. Okay, the big one that Bruner has been writing, he says his name is Bolt. Okay, so that one's Bolt. Oh, cool. What about you two? And uh, the one housey has been writing, its name is Bumble. Bumble? Bumble. That's Bumble. Ooh. And the one that Willow's been writing, its name is Flash. That's Flash. <laughs> okay, Bolt, Bumble, Flash, and Flash. Bumble. All right. Are so we going to stealth? Stealth mode. All right, stealth All right, it. Yeah, stealth. 18 and stealth. 18 for Egan. Chain mail. Uh, Chain mail. Okay. And what'd you get on your stealth roll? A nine. And Willow? Ten. I got right. 17. You all feel like you're being pretty stealthy. Egan <laughs> knows he's being stealthy. Yes. The clothes of Willow are giving me So maybe strength. since Egan <laughs> is so confident, maybe he would go on the other side of the road from you guys or ahead a little better. Or are you just going to stay together as a group? Last time I separated, I ended up naked in the span of one one hour. So I'm gonna stay with you. <laughs> with the party. I'm gonna stay with you guys. Yeah, probably just keep an eye look out. By the way, uh, in case it didn't come to you, you lay in there naked and like the pods you found, they're not with you either, you know. Oh god, the pods. Oh god. The what pods. More pods. I found more pods. You found more pods? Yes. Oh, oh. Do you think they took the pods? Well, we'll find out when we find well, your what stuff. What are they going to do with the pods? If, if they took your pods, okay. it'll be with You're the stuff. You're losing your stealth. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, you cross the hill there, and uh, you can see that the trunks of these two enormous oak trees join together, and roots come out of the ground and, and tie into a knot, covering... Uh, are making an arch almost over what looks like the entrance to a cave. Uh, you think this was made by our little plant friend? Or do you think it was made by the poop paper? From the ground floor to the top of the cave entrance, it's about five feet two inches. This is like and it's about shorties made. And it's about 16 feet wide. Okay, I start crawling on all fours to get inside there. I slouch. It's five foot two. You don't have to crawl. I get, well, yeah, but I don't want to you crawl. It's bad for your back. All right. We're only going to be in here for like probably an hour. I don't know. It's going to hurt my back. Okay, Bruno, I, as, I as you slightly. approach, you notice that in the oak tree to the right, about 12 feet up, there's damage to the tree Almost a carving, almost like what would have been a big morning star just punched a hole through the bark in this tree. I pointed out, looky, looky. What did the Looks like someone wanted big to do plant monster's arms look like? Like vines, vines that the sometimes top. collided together into thick, massive braided ropes of right. vines. So probably not. Occasionally a branch would be in there. Yeah. Do we know anyone with this kind of weapon? How big was it? Oh my gosh, if it was a morning star that hit this tree, the ball would be probably a good two feet across. Holy Whoa. shit. Like a wrecking ball. Yeah. That's a big morning star. Have you guys heard of this guy named... Um, At least we'll see it coming. What was his name? His Ooh. name is Sauron. I don't know, but he had pretty eyes. <laughs> a little flaming. Okay, so you're going to Don't we know someone could maybe be able I... to like swing this? How badly do you want your stuff? <laughs> <laughs> well, I had 64 gold pieces on me. Uh, the boom powder. I'll give you six. <laughs> a bunch of jewels. Some of the glowing shrooms. It does begin to occur to you all that pretty much everything he's missing can be replenished at Melendor. Oh, yes. come on. That's true. But they're emotionally attachments, not everybody. So you well, might have to do some looking around and some wheeling and dealing and trading to get instruments that are actually good enough for his spell casting. What do you mean? He's got the pot. 
<laughs> he hasn't tried to use it yet. <laughs> <laughs> so shatter's a thing. I mean, if you're really that attached to your stuff, I'm not going to let you go in there Well, alone. if you guys don't want to go, that's fine. Let's just oh, go. No. Oh, no. I don't want to enter your you. I mean, we fine. did just fight a giant plant monster. I don't know. Well, this place could be under the control of someone we might know of, Kondo. He might be the little one who swings that thing that big. Oh, yeah, that big guy. Kondo. Remind me, how high up did I say that? I don't know. Mark, yeah, 12 feet. About 12 feet up. Kondo's not that yeah, tall. Yeah. Unless, like, if it was a Morning Star, chain on the Morning Star would have to be a good four and a half, five feet. Yeah. Okay. Just get back in. Well, I'll go in. I'll go in for your stuff. No. Not saying I won't. No. That's just concerning. <laughs> What's up there? You guys want to investigate? Is, the, it, is the hole like going? Is it a hole? Yeah, it's a definitely like a cave entrance. That would look kind of like a big, wide rabbit hole. Uh -huh. Would you almost? consider it a gaping and, hole? And as oh it, it, it's, you know, <laughs> go to Monty Python and the Holy Grail when they before oh. they went into the, the cave of Ah, yes, yes. and it looks a lot like that. Right? Uh, and 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 okay. even as you can tell by what light is outside going in, that as soon as you enter the cave entrance, you're you're going downhill. It, it almost yeah, immediately <laughs> goes into a steep downhill grade. Let's just head home. I'm tired. Home? All right, we can mount home if you want. Yeah, at this point, we've got to return the horses, though. Well, what we should do is go back to where you got absconded, see if your horse is there. Well, that's true. Cube. And see if the pods are there. I hope for the pods are there. And maybe look for some more pods. Okay, we could do that. And then we can deliver all that, and then we can go back to Melendorf, and we can get you your stuff. I mean, if it was just the poop babies, I feel like we could take it. 100%. But I feel like it's more than that. But we're going down to their level, to the darkness. That's true, too. And how many of them are there? A right. good number of them will be stabbed to death. <laughs> I didn't even stalk dark vision. I mean, I can see in the dark. I didn't so. know we were going to be going to the dark again. Stop looking at me like that. Right, are we going back or not? Yeah, let's yeah, go back. We are let's right, go right, back. Right. Okay. <laughs> so you all agree and you turn your horses around and, and you're riding away and, and you get a good football field and a half away. So... You've gone back over that crest where you can't see the cave anymore. And back in that direction, you know you heard it, man. You heard it, it's echoing from the cave. <laughs> Shit, bitch. What did you call me, you little poop baby? Get back here. Do you want me to knock Egan unconscious? I'm fine. Oh. Uh, fine, 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 fine. What we can do is we can, we can mount a proper expedition for this. There's probably, there could be a hundred of those little guys in there. Who That's knows? That's true. We should come back properly prepared with, like, flasks of oil. Light that whole tree on fire if we have to. <laughs> okay, you guys begin riding back to the village again. No, no. We're uh, going first to the river where yeah. he's oh, that's right. Okay, let's see that. Let's see if Sugar Cube's still alive. We got to see if Sugar Cube's still alive. Okay. He did take Sugar Cube on the other side of the river. You did find a place where that was not a hard thing to do. You make it to the spot in the river where you once again see the carnage that was the vines that you destroyed and Brunar turned into a transformer. Egan leads you to the spot where he crossed the river before and you have no trouble going back to where his camp was. And sure enough, the fire is still kind of glowing with some little embers. The pods are there. Okay. And so is Sugar Cube. Uh, Glad we oh. came out here. Mission accomplished. Yeah, mission <laughs> accomplished. If you want, I'll, I'll take a break in a moment, and we can go through some of your stuff uh -huh. and say like what was on Sugar Cube that was uh -huh. not on your body. Okay, so <laughs> you guys have uh, picked up these two more pods. No, there was three because I remember last session I did find one more, and it was the. I think it was the boy or That's girl. right. He's got three total. Four horses. Yeah. You guys are still walking. <laughs> Sugar Cube loves me, even though she knows I got... Okay, you have Sugar Cube. You have the three pods. You're back across the river, and you're headed back towards the village. Keeping an eye out for short People. little... Poo babies. Poo babies. On your way back, you, you don't go back the way you went where you found the first poo baby. Yeah. You go back the way you went when you came out here to fight the vine creature. Yep. Mm -hmm. Able Reed. And you're back at the village. Uh, it is now about two o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. I'm going to go deliver the horses to the guy. Yep. Yeah. Be back right. in a Shouldn't we deliver the pods? pods first? 
Yes. Do all four of us need to do that? As you ride into the village, there are people mulling about, some people busy at work. It looks like it's not like any kind of a uh, farmer's market day or anything, so most people are at their farms. Trisha is there, and she sees the pods on the horse right away, and she looks at you guys and says, I'll get the sheriff, and runs off to get him. Don't worry, these are old. <laughs> Don't worry. Be happy. As you bring your horses up and you, you're climbing off and you're going to dust off and start getting them ready to take the horses back, uh, mm -hmm. Otto Olimar, the halfling, and he's got his suspenders on and he puts his thumbs in his suspenders and he says, holy cow, you found them all. Yeah, we're just that good. Exactly. So, um, all of us equally share in the And everything you found, <laughs> everything you found in the pods, in the clothes, in, 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 in the, the killing of this Abel Reed monster who used to work for me. It's very surprising. Huh. Did you find anything, uh, I don't know, that we that we would call a symbol? A crest? No. Uh, I don't think uh, so. Can you be I found more... These. You know, a crest, like a family crest, like two lions jumping on a mountain or on, something. On uh, Mr. Uh, on on anything, guy? on anything. I chucked the yo-yo. <laughs> What's the hell? No. Uh, yeah, I don't just think so. Can I roll a knowledge check, I guess? I don't know, maybe <laughs> wait, I saw one. I open up my bag You guys, I... none of you remember seeing any any kind yeah. of a crest on anything? No. We... <laughs> on anything that you've really looked at yet or anything? No. I just found these odds last night and I don't remember seeing no crest. Pretty good. Okay. What? I was hoping to hear that. Excellent. Well, what's the crest about? Well, I want to know what forces are at work here. Oh. Are you having nobility troubles? Is someone so like political troubles going on? Yeah, who has the lions? You're looking for those. Well, I wasn't looking for lions. Example. I was looking for any kind of a crest. I, I, I think of it. You guys work for Melindor. It's the kind of stuff Melindor would ask you. He'd want to know. You know, who's who's pushing the pawns around here? Looks like more. Or is it all just a happenstance <sighs> thing that my gardener got changed into a walking plant monster? For me, I don't know, but maybe sounds like it. Maybe it's maybe they like appeal to his interest. A lot of well, people, or maybe well, he was well. just lucky, got maybe, what he wanted. Me personally, I think they just interested him in some way. Maybe he ate the wrong thing. Do you know of any other people who are very mad at the world? No. Well, did he have any other friends <laughs> that he hung out with? Any other people that he would frequent? I'd have to say he's hung out with everybody in the village at some point or another. Magalith would know Abel pretty well. Uh, he visited her often. I believe we also learned that he wasn't well liked. Yep. Uh, he had a gruff attitude often, I would say. Not the most polite individual, mm. but kept to himself a lot. Mm. Do you mind if we search his quarters? Oh, yeah. Why haven't we already done that? Of course not. Not at all. all right. Great. Can you show us to them? Yeah, my place is about a half hour ride from here, and that's where Abel's uh, lodgings were. At your place, indeed. With the rest of your help, I mean, yeah, usually staff usually live on yeah. property. property. That's what I'm getting at. That that might be an HQ. He's uh -huh. got a hut on my orchard. Yeah, amongst others, live true. With maybe they divvied up his stuff when he went missing. Let's hope. Well, it sounds like he wasn't. It really seemed like people knew he was missing. He probably well, if he was wasn't showing around. up for work. He didn't say, did he say that? I don't think he said no, that. Never, never oh, was that. he still showing up for work while these disappearances <laughs> no, were happening? No, he definitely was, now that I think of it, not yes, around. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I don't feel like people Surprisingly, would divvy up his stuff. <laughs> I don't think it was noticed by anybody until you guys just brought it up right now. Nobody even noticed he wasn't around. Like I said, kept to himself. Hmm. Lot of man. Uh, yeah, really wasn't right. long enough for the gardens to get really ugly, so who would have known? Okay, well, we gotta wait for the sheriff to get here. And the sheriff's walking up. Ah, uh, there they are. Sheriff. Ah, uh, how are you guys? We've we found more. We found more pods. You know what? Let's put these in the morgue quickly. Yep. And uh, let it be at that, and I'll handle the news that goes to the right people. That's great. Thank okay. you. Okay, the pods are respectfully placed. All right, let's go search this guy's home. Yeah. Okay, so you guys all get on horses. <laughs> Otto Olimon has a athletic looking pony and you all ride out together. As you arrive, you, you start to see a lot of the same kind of bush plantings that you saw 
around Magala's place. But at Magala's place. And so he's obviously growing the same kind of mead berries on most of his property. And you ride through some of those and you see a group of small stone buildings huh. over to the right. And you're heading towards those. And then to the left, you see something highly unusual out here in Port Lock. It's an actual, like, small keep. It looks like a defendable little fortress. You have a fortress? Oh, yeah, that's my house. That's your house? Uh, well, it's, I'm an Oliman. We've been around. It's my house. The, the Oliman keep's been here protecting Mary Mead for 200 years? Protecting. <laughs> yeah, it's a wow. bang up job. <laughs> oh, snap. Somebody call a burn unit. And as you go to the other side of the uh, orchard, there are seven little stone houses that, you know, would be like a, a nice size one bedroom apartment in Port Lock. Country, country living. Yeah, yes. one of the best ones. It's kind of it's a, like a little visit to Tuscany. Oh. And uh, Olimon takes you to the one at the farthest end away from the village and says, this is Abel's place right here. Well, your employees live nice. Hey, I take care of my people. Uh, so let's Everyone's head inside said. and look. Otto opens the door for you. It's it's one of those little latch handles that, you know, as you push down with your thumb, a little bar goes up and picks up a latch and you can swing the door open. There's no lock on it. Mm -hmm. It looks undisturbed. And there is, in the first room that you walk into, a very small, usable fireplace. There is a daybed looking couch that's like, wow, that's pretty nice. There's a chair to rival Willow's favorite chair. Oh my God. Oh, uh, what are you doing with that chair there? Thing? We have a friend. And there is a small it. round table in front of that chair. It's a set. And then there's a credenza bookshelfy looking thing. That is basically been used as a garden shed. It's got all kinds of garden tools on it. And, and you can tell there's places on it where he's stored bags of seeds and, and soil and could have been better taken care of. And then there's an open archway that goes into a, another room straight across. And next to that on the left wall is another door. Right. Uh, let's look it out, I guess. And none of these are doors you can open. They're just archways that you can walk through. Oh, yeah. Okay. Is the other door go outside? No, the one straight across goes into what is obviously his bedroom. Uh, and there's a bed in there that be a little bit bigger than what we would call a twin or a full bed. Smaller than a queen. There is a chest of drawers. There is an axe that does not look like it was made for chopping logs. That's pretty much about all you see in here. And check, uh, look all around the floors and everything like that. See if there's a trap door that he hid somewhere. Or maybe if he probably sure. Make me a happy special roll. Investigation. Uh, it's a plus two. Okay, you are quite confident that you that there's nothing there. All right, well, there's no Shashama situation. There's no trap door. He said he had a desk, right? Yeah, oh, it's sorry. like his his shelf area has like a little desky looking right. part sticking out of it. Yeah. Are there any like drawers or anything? There is one small drawer is in that bookshelf. Right I open there. that and it's like go through it or anything. There's a pipe, things to smoke, a little tinder box. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Any, is there a secret like, could it be like maybe a false bottom? I don't have any boxes. Would this be, what would this be, investigation? You're very confident that there's, there's nothing like that there. All right. Mm -hmm. right. I checked. Oh, so sorry, Bernard. You go first. Yes. I'm going to check for good and evil. I'm smoking out of his pipe. Specifically detecting evil. Who knows? I might you, you don't feel uh, a specific vibe either way. Very neutral. <clears throat> I don't feel anything. Okay. Particularly bad. I don't feel Well, he wasn't anything. a good guy. I wouldn't expect you to be sad about his death or anything. Well, he was no. a jerk, you know, but he... he Normally, had never done anything to hurt anybody, or except for those children that he. Well, by the time that happened, he wasn't here anymore. At I guess mm -hmm. that's good to know, as far as you know. Uh, uh, missing around the same time, those children went. Correct. So obviously, it was him. Yeah, oh, yeah. the man we killed. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure it was him. Sure it was him. <laughs> but that's very important. Yeah, that means for how many weeks has this been going on? This man has been gone for two weeks. Richard. He is the one who helps property here. No one else noticed that he was missing, and 
conveniently around that time, no one ever thought to wonder, hey. And only Martin reminds you, he said, well, like I said, we hadn't thought about it until you guys brought it up right now. But yeah, it was maybe three or four weeks tops and it, it wasn't long enough for anybody to notice that the gardens had started to get any kind of ratty looking or anything. Plus he had a special affinity with plants, though. I start looking for anything that might be contact information because he must have gotten this circlet somehow. Right. Old, old I'm, circlets. I'm assuming he didn't just he didn't find it on, on in one of the he bushes. There's nothing written. Nothing there's, written. There's no parchment. Yeah. There's nothing to write with. No books. Hmm. There's nothing to read. I'm also going to check the bed if that's okay. Yeah. That's 13 plus... Oh, okay. So that's a 15 total. It looks like a bed. Yeah. It's made. It's made. Oh, it's made. So he made his bed before he went on a motor. There's dust. Yeah. Yeah, there's dust on that bed. All right. Anything under the bed. Well, there is that giant axe. Under the bed, there are four different pairs of boots. One of them is like a dress pair that are very well made and polished. Are they my size? I grab them before you even think of it. Do we have the same size feet? They would be closer to Egan's feet than you. Damn it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Fine. Smoking his pipe. Oh, the only mind's like shaking his head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys work for Melendor. Right? <laughs> I was worried that the other employees were going to steal his stuff, but were the ones stealing his stuff. And it's thinking he is a criminal who murdered okay. three children. The other, the other oh, shoes God. under the bed. One is a, a high pair of boots for like if you were going to go working in some muddy, sloshy crap and you wanted something that went up over your knees. And the other one looks like a pretty standard pair of work boots. And then the last one looks like his pair of shoes that he would wear to just kind of go flopping around in. They're low and soft. They don't look like it's something you'd be wearing to work in. I don't think there's anything here. Well, there's that giant battle axe again. <laughs> the axe is a double-bladed axe. Bruno, you should check this out. <laughs> I check out the double-bladed axe. The handle of the axe is made out of... Well, it's, it's all one piece of metal. It's not like a head of an axe cool. that's been placed on a piece of wood. This does not look like something a guy like Abel Reed would have. Mm. This looks like a battle axe definitely the size of somebody like Halsey or Bruner would use. The handle is about three feet long. And from the end of the handle up to the blade... In a spiral fashion is obviously the body of a serpent, some kind of snake. As mm. it gets to the top of the double bladed head in the center before the two blades split apart like Batman's wings mm. is a symbol of definitely serpent. And it does like a Celtic nod in the center and then... At the ends, the sides come out and go over the top, and each end has a head facing each other. Is, is that like the crest, crest you're looking for? <laughs> yeah. Is, like is that the crest? crest? There's a crest right there. <laughs> oh my God, Oliman says. Otto Oliman, his, his jaw is dropped, and he says, Yeah, that's, uh, that's a crest. All right. Uh, you wouldn't have uh, no who? Would you? Yeah, and I guarantee you Melendor does too. Do you mind if I take this so, back to Melendor? I don't want it here. Take it. I grab it. Do you mind telling us? I mean... Yeah, yeah, yeah. North of here, pretty much due north of here. After you've passed the hills, it, it becomes a bit of a desert. And in that desert is a ruined city. Not very big, bigger than this village. Most of it known as a temple, though not thought used as much anymore. But still there are the last followers of Set, hmm. the snake god, I guess I'll call it. So this thing, this giant axe is a belonging of follower of Set. Well, we know it at least came from... It came from there. Probably the era of time when oh. they were a lot stronger. And okay. a lot more of them. Okay. That, that narrows down that. our search a little bit. Yeah. Let's what just, Abel yeah. would have this here for is beyond me. I hope, let's just hope he only used that to prune 
I don't think Abel could pick that up. Well, that is suspicious. Well, he's, you know, for a little wiry guy, he did do some hefty gardening. He's stronger than he looks, or was. All right, I think we should head back to Melendor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. I yes. live, but I can't lift it. Please take it. I'm sure... Uh, I grab it. <laughs> sure Melander will be happy to send something my way. I feel like we're forgetting someone at the village. No, I think we're good. Oh, we? right, let's go find Gil. Let's go Gil. find Gil. <laughs> Gil's been kidnapped again. Oh, no. <laughs> it must be that dwarf. Again. Okay, so you go back to the village. That's another more than a half an hour trip back. So it's about 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon now. You get to the village, and I, I take it you're going to that great hall. Yes. Go in there, and you see first Freyla, because she is the easiest to see. Freylia, because she's so big and red. And she's doing some kind of knitting and sewing in this hoop with a cloth stretched across it. And as you walk in, get to where you can see past her, there's Gil sitting next to her doing the same thing. <laughs> Hey, Gil. Hey, what's up? Check it out. Freyla taught me how to sew. Nice. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. I mean, like, I know how to sew. Clothes. I've made things for you guys, but this this is very artsy. This is pretty cool. I like it. If you can, can you make me a new cape with that? I got sort of robbed. Press so. your luck, boy. <laughs> <laughs> also, we got to go back to Schmidt's. Time to head back. Uh, huh? Yeah. 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 And, uh, we, got, we got news. and we've... Very well. Gil hops up and says, Freyla, thank you. This has been wonderful. And she's, oh, Gil, anytime. And they hug, and she gives them a little peck on the cheek, and all right, boys, off, let's go. All right, we load up. So I get Gil talk. It's Gil talk. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, talk like that. Halsey Malice Will is played by J. Dean Garcia. Will Lagonde is Wyatt Spencer. Egan the Bard is played by Javier Velasquez. Brunner Stormshield is played by Rod Diaz. Your game master, writer, and all other voices are Daniel French. Production, editing, sound design is Daniel French at Fishbonia Sound Design. Port Locks theme music is by yours truly. I hope you enjoyed this journey aboard the Chronosphere. Until next time, keep your cosmos clean.